soon as Dylan walks on the screen, you ain't putting that tablet down. Yeah! Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna do my January favourites. I am a little bit late on this January favourites kind of thing because we're on the 9th of February now. But I thought I would do it today because I'd got a spare filming day. First thing you might notice, one, hair is different, yes. Two, glasses are different, yes. Um, I have done a video on my hair, um, the hair dye in process, because I did it all myself from the red to purple to the silver ombre. I have done it all myself. Um, so I am going to edit and finish filming that video because that is a separate video that's going to take a little bit longer. Um, and also my glasses, you can probably see they're quite reflective. Um, yeah, I love them, but they're quite reflective. So I'm really sorry if you can't really see my eyes, but I kind of need them on in order to film. So just roll with it, just go with it. So we'll start off with favorite number one being these new glasses. I got them about a week ago now. Um, I need to go into a opticians and get the prescription changed because it's not my prescription at the moment. I can see, I can see perfectly fine, um, but I can't see past a certain Thing. So for driving, I have to use my old glasses because I can't see very long distance. So it's fine for looking around in here, but if I look outside and try and look over the houses, it gets a bit blurry, like the further away I try and look. So, favourite number one, new glasses. So the first section of my favourites I'm going to do is makeup because everyone has to love a bit of makeup every month. And the first thing that I've been loving this month is my first ever MAC pigment. So I got it in the shade Platinum, and for any of you that know or don't know, I'm actually being a makeup artist for three different weddings this year, which is insane. I can't believe how like far I've come from doing makeup on myself to being asked to do three different weddings. So I brought this um, silver pigment because the bride that I'm going to see on Thursday for the consultation wants quite a natural kind of goldy, silver, smoky eye kind of look. So I brought this as I'm going to wing her eyeliner um, over the top with this, if that makes sense. I will do like a makeup, uh, wedding makeup video in the future. Um, this was 16.50, but it is amazing. It's so pigmented because it's a pigment. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this one this month. So the next favorite of the month is obviously my NARS Sheer Glow Foundation. I have been wearing this every day. Uh, my friend Shannon lent me a MAC one just after Christmas and I've also tried I think a Rimmel one, but both times I have loved them, but I've just gone straight back to this because this is amazing. I don't know how they got the colour to be so right. Like I went in and obviously they colour matched me, but it's so right and it looks so good. And um, yeah, I'm really enjoying this one. This one was about £33. I'm not sure because I got it for Christmas, um, but I've been using this every day, non-stop, every single day without fail. So the next makeup related favourite that I've got is this little Lancome eye palette. Now if you've seen my cohort in beauty box you'll know that I actually got this in there and it's a bit messy because the brush is really small and it's really hard to like keep it clean and my sister did have a little go and she's kind of ruined it a little bit. This is a little lifesaver in a tiny little packet. So basically what I do with it is I put my primer on in the morning, which I will talk about my primer because I've got a favourite primer this month. Um, and then I put this on before I apply my foundation and it just, one, it helps set your under eyes beautifully. Like my highlighter now just like glides on and it's lovely. Um, but my eyes don't look so tired. Um, it obviously it brightens and it conceals and it is just, it's part of my daily routine now. When I first got this in the cohorted box, I was excited because it was Lancome and it was like an interesting, different kind of gift. But I thought I'm probably not going to use this because I opened it up and um, I thought, well, that's too dark for my skin. That's too light for my skin and that doesn't show up on my skin because I tried them all individually. Little did I realise you have to try them all together and then it works like a freaking dream. Um, I'm not sure how much this retails at, but I will leave my cohorted box opening review below so you can go and check it out because I definitely said it in there. So while we're sticking on that kind of theme, um, I'll show you my primer. This is the Nivea Daily Essentials Express Hydration Primer. I brought this ages ago now and I have only just kind of picked it back up when my Stila uh, One Step Corrector ran out. 
and I needed a primer urgently and I just picked this one back up out of my makeup drawers because I thought it's there why don't I try and get some more use out of it and now I can't not use it because my skin after Christmas has seemed to have gone a little bit dry I've had very dry patches around my nose basically my t-zone I've had a lot of dry patches um, and this literally gives so much hydration to that and it just feels like it doesn't feel dewy because obviously it soaks in right away but this has also helped my foundation stay on I've noticed a lot longer for example before I mean I was using like a collection foundation and probably a collection primer or something along those lines but I'd come home from work or school or college and I'd have blotches where my foundations like come off during the day and it's probably a combination of the type of foundation I'm using but I think this primer has really helped with not letting it do that because I can come home from a nine hour shift and my face still looks the same as when I woke up, that, well not when I woke up, my face still looks the same as when I went to work that morning so I really recommend this, it's about 5 99 from Boots, um, yeah really recommend this one. Okay so the next favourite makeup related is um, the Tanya Burr Rosy Flush Cheek Palette. I have been using this again every day in my daily routine. Um, the only thing I don't really like about it is the bronzer. It's a little dark for my face so I am still using my NARS Laguna bronzer just because for me it works better but I have used this before and it is really good. Um, the blush I use every day and this is also now my favourite highlight. Um, I am wearing it today you probably can't tell because my glasses take up the majority of my face. Um, but this is the best highlighter I think I've ever used because it's shimmery and there's a really loud plane. It's not glittery but it's shimmery um, which I really really enjoy. Um, I am planning when I get paid this month to buy Champagne Pop by Becca and Jacqueline Hill because everybody is raving about that or at least a Becca highlighter because everyone's raving about that and I'm gonna see if it compares to this one but considering it's Tanya Burr and I know that sounds really like I don't know prejudice? prejudice? <laughs> Because she's a YouTuber, I thought maybe the products aren't going to be great because they're just... Do you know what I mean? But I am utterly shocked and I'm so happy that I got this for Christmas because it has changed my makeup routine. So thank you, Tanya. So my final makeup related item is my NARS bronzing brush thing. I've spoken about this before and um, basically I just really like it. Um, I used to use just like a round flat head kind of brush to blend my bronzer in and it worked fine um, and it actually blended really nicely but this one creates a bit more definition um, because obviously it's like so flat. Um, the only thing that I don't like about this is sometimes the bristles do come out which you know it's probably the same for every brush but it is a little bit annoying when you just get like one random black fine bristle on your face because then it will not come off for ages. You can spend ages trying to like scratch it off and it doesn't come off. But this is the best bronzing brush that I have ever used so I highly recommend to get this if you can. And the next two items in my favourites are hair care. So the first one that I've got here is the Purology Colour Fanatic 21 Essential Benefits Hair Spray. It's not a hairspray, but you basically put it in your hair when you've washed it and um, towel dried it. And it's basically got 21 benefits within it. And I'm not going to go through all of them because it's a lot. But basically it's like a heat protector. It's a colour protector that so keeps your colour in. Um, it makes your hair feel really soft. Gets rid of split ends. Um, yeah, there's just loads of things that it does. And I have had this for about six months now. And I've still got so much left because you literally only need... I basically separate my hair like this when I'm blow drying it and then I use two squirts for this side and two squirts for this side and rub it all in and that's all you need so four squirty things and you're sorted and there's so much in here it's 200ml bottle and there's a lot in here um, this was about 16 99 and I did get it from my hairdresser so I'm not sure if you can get it from like boots or anything I did have to go through my hairdressers directly to pick this up the next hair care product I've been loving this month is the Jerome Russell Be Blonde Silver Maximum Colour Toner because as you can see I have dyed my hair or I have bleached the crap out of my hair and um, basically it took me two days to do my hair and I am going to do another video on this so I won't go into it but um, I needed to tone my hair before I could put the silver on it because it's quite orangey breathy the first time I bleached it 
um, so I needed to put this on. This didn't do a lot the first time because my hair wasn't bleached enough, so obviously when I bleached it the second time and it went like a white blonde, then I toned it with this. Uh, it didn't go crazy silver, but it did tone it lovely for me to then put the silver dye on top. And I'm going to use this because there's still so much left in the bottle. Just, and basically it's purple um, and I'm just going to use it once a month I'm going to sit down and try my hair with it because it has worked and it has kept the colour quite nice and it hasn't gone back as brassy as it was when I first dyed it so I've got two kind of random favourites before I move on to others so the first one I've got here are a pair of shoes so these are my Puma Suede Sports and I freaking love these they cost me 25 pound from sports direct um because i can get kids sizes because i've got little feet i have been wearing these non-stop they have kind of replaced my janoskis which makes me really sad because i love my janoskis but because of how white these are i just love them um my janoskis have kind of faded and they need a good wash but um they're really comfortable and they were only 25 quid which I don't think you can really go wrong with. Um, I do have another pair of Puma Suede's but they're not the sport version, they're just the ordinary version and I got them in like a red burgundy colour and I don't wear them ever. Um, the main reason I didn't wear them before was because my hair was red and it kind of con like contrasted in the wrong way, it didn't work. Whereas I thought black and white you can wear with pretty much any outfit and thumbs up to these, I love them. So the next kind of random favourite is a book and the book that I have been reading and loving this month is Silence by Becca Fitzpatrick. This is the third book in the Hush Hush series. So there's Hush Hush, Hush Hush, Hush Hush, Hush Hush, Hush, Crescendo, Silence and then Finale and I do not want this book series to freaking end. This has changed my reading life. This is the reason, this series is the reason I have started reading again and this is the reason I have that many bloody books because of this goddamn series. So I'm not going to spoil it and I'm not going to go into it because when I finish the whole season, I do a whole se the whole series, I do want to do like an overall book review for you. But in this book, something happens to Nora and she basically forgets everything that's ever happened. So she forgets all about Patch and that made me really sad because even though Patch is kind of sly bad character, you just, I felt so attached to Patch in the first two books. And I really quite fancy him. You know when you get an image in your head and you keep like reading about him and it's just, oh my god. If they ever make a movie and I don't play Nora Gray, I'm going to be really upset because I want to see who they cast as Patch. Because <laughs> that would be insane. Um, anyway, yes. So I'm pretty much halfway through this one. This one's a little bit more confusing than the other two just because she has forgotten everything after this um, series of events kind of happened. Um, so it's kind of going back over the previous two books and like recapping it's a bit of a recap book but I haven't got to the end yet so I don't know whether that will continue but it's amazing it's great and the good thing about it is she's forgotten things that happened but we can remember things that happened and it's so frustrating to be like this is happening but you can't tell her because it's a book and it's not real life anyway highly recommend this book this whole series if you want to get back into reading so the final few things that I've got in my favourites are actually TV shows. Um, my number one January favourite TV show this month is Luther and I can only thank Zoella for that because I watched her, I'd watched about 10 minutes of the pilot episode just maybe before Christmas or just after Christmas and I wasn't I didn't want to carry on watching. I got about 10 minutes of the way through and I thought, I got distracted, I probably went on Twitter and then I just forgot about it basically. And then I'd seen a few people like kind of raving about it. Um, yeah, and then I started watching it again recently and I am hooked. It is amazing. If you ever, if you have Netflix, just stop what you're doing right now, well I'll actually finish this video, and then go over and start watching it because it is amazing. The great thing about it, the thing that I love about Luther is we see both sides of the story. So it's basically like a crime thriller series where we follow this detective Luther and he goes and basically solves all of these crimes, but the storylines flow through all the episodes. So in the first one, you meet this girl called Alice whose parents have just died and they can't find out who did it but Luther knows Alice did it um, because she like feeds off like the fame, the bad fame. Um, so that 
episode kind of ends on a bit of a cliffhanger and then in the second episode something completely different a completely new crime happens but Alice is still involved like Alice is still trying to work some things out from the first episode and what I love is that you can see the police and the detectives trying to work out the crime and then you can see the killer committing the crimes and why they do it because like normal detective films you only get to see you find out who the killer is when the police find out who the killer is you don't have any you can kind of guess but you don't have any indications to who actually did it whereas in Luther you watch them do it and it's almost like you can work it out with them rather than just watch them you can work it out with them it is addictive it really is um I watched an episode this morning and I said to myself I was going to film at 10 o'clock it got to quarter past 10 I was halfway through an episode and I just couldn't stop watching it to film <laughs> which is really bad priorities but you know so yeah if you can have Netflix, go and watch it because it is amazing. Final favourite for this month is another Netflix TV show and it is Bates Motel. This is an Emily Cannum recommendation and I am highly forever grateful for that. I love Bates Motel. Can we just talk about Max Leroy though? How attractive, if you don't, Dylan in the, in the show, how attractive is Dylan? He's like this bad boy persona but he's just like... I think he is rather tasty. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway. So Bates Motel basically follows the story of Norman Bates and his mum, Norma. And basically, Norman's dad dies. And at the beginning, it's shown as an accident. But it basically comes out that Norman did it. Um, because he's, I think he's slightly schizophrenic and he basically has blackout episodes where he can't remember what he's doing and he kind of commits all these crimes and then Norma has to kind of cover for him and say that they were all accidents. So after Norma, Norman's dad dies they move to White Pine Bay and they buy a motel and they decide that they're going to run this motel together and then Dylan shows up and Dylan is Norma's other son with a different dad which becomes very intriguing and exciting and if you've seen Bates Motel you know what I'm talking about but I'm not going to ruin it for those that don't but basically Dylan has a different dad and he's kind of like the end result of something quite bad and Dylan and Norma don't get on to begin with because basically Norma just uprooted and left and didn't tell Dylan where they were going and it kind of just progresses through that a lot of people die and you don't know that it's Norman because they don't they only show they only show one murder I think they only show like one or two murders and the, f the others you don't actually see him doing it you kind of just see the blank and then it kind of comes back and you think well he's probably done that um and i have just finished season three i brought it on dvd because i couldn't wait for it to come out on netflix and i need season four i finished it in a week i got to the 10th episode on the disc and thought that i was like three episodes away from finishing and then it just finished and i was like what it literally just ended on such a cliffhanger and I'm not gonna ruin it but Bradley well we know Bradley's not dead right because in the first season Bradley dies but actually she runs away um, because Dylan helps her because she gets on the bus and blah, blah, blah. Um, but Bradley returns that's all I'm gonna say um, yeah, anyway, I'm kind of going completely off topic here. I'm just digressing and talking about Bates Motel. I could do a whole video on Bates Motel because I'm just that passionate. So that is my favourites from this month. This has been kind of a longer video, but I decided I wanted to do a longer video just to do a longer video, basically, and talk about it. So I really, really hope that you have enjoyed the video. Do give this a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to comment down below, like, subscribe, all of that jazz, because we're at 106 subscribers. The last time you saw me, I'm pretty sure we just hit 100. And I was like, ooh, party. We're at 106. So let's keep climbing, guys. Let's keep climbing. I want to get to 150 by the end of February and try and push it up. Push it up, guys. Push it up. So yes, thanks for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.